for today's headlines, telcos ready to comply with SIM card registration law. After jail rampage, fresh appeals call to put the Lima's case to put her on house arrest. Vloggers' accreditation for palace coverage still being studied. Senators call for lifting of COVID-19 one health pass. As NDRRMC keeps tight watch of Mayan's unrest, LGUs are told to brace. Good evening. Today is Monday, October 10. I am Vernon Velasco and this is Tribune News on Q. Here are the stories for this evening. The country's three telecommunications companies lauded the signing of the SIM card registration bill and noted that preparations are underway to ensure their compliance. In a statement Monday, Globe Telecom Incorporated General Counsel Froilan Castello welcomed a new regulatory environment that would allow for stronger safeguards against cyber threats and other crimes using mobile phones. To date, Globe is working with the government in drafting the implementing of rules and regulations for the enforcement of the law, including the registration of millions of existing prepaid mobile users. In a separate statement, Smart Communications Incorporated Vice President and Head of Regulatory Affairs Roy Ebay said that there is a clamor from public telecommunications entities such as Smart to be given more time to prepare and test its systems to ensure the safety of the information that will be collected from prepaid subscribers. He said the company is ready to participate in the crafting of the bill's IRR within the prescribed period. Dito, Telecommunity Chief Technology Officer Rodolfo Santiago said that the storage of biometrics data that will be used by all telcos to validate the identity of their users is assumed to be under the government for security, data privacy, and resource optimization. Former Senate President Franklin Drillon on Monday urged the judge handling the case of former Senator Laila De Lima to take a second look at the evidence on her case and allow her to be on house arrest. Drillon, who retur returned to the upper chamber to unveil the legacy wall with his fellow lawmakers, said it is upon the prerogative of the judge. The former lawmaker, who also served as Justice Secretary for six years from 1990 to 1995, made an appeal following the foiled hostage-taking of De Lima last Sunday. Meanwhile, opposition Senator Risa Hontiveros reiterated their call to President Ferdinand Marcos to set De Lima free, who had been detained since 2017. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulla earlier said that he will not oppose any actions to free De Lima, who has been detained for allegedly pocketing payoffs from drug lords when she was still the Justice Secretary to raise money, allegedly for her senatorial campaign in 2016. Ontiveros expressed her hope that charges against the former lawmaker would soon be junked by the court. The Office of the Press Secretary is still in the process of evaluating whether or not vloggers and other social media practitioners may be accredited to cover President Ferdinand Marcos and Malacanang events. During the Senate Subcommittee on Finance hearing on Monday, newly installed Ops Officer in Charge under Secretary Chelov Garafil said that her office will continue studying the status of vlogger accreditation that began during the administration of former President Rodrigo Duterte. Garafil said she hopes her office may soon issue guidelines on vlogger accreditation in time. She also noted that the OPS plans to hold consultations with other media sectors to obtain more insights and what they can expect from vlogger accreditation. Earlier, former President, Press Secretary, rather, Trixie Cruz Angeles said giving social media personalities access to palace coverage will help raise public awareness on the policies and programs of the incoming Marcos administration. Tribune News on Q will be back after these reminders. Magandang araw mga katribu! Narito na ang mga makakasama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising Na. Roy Pelovelo, Comfy Manalo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha at Chirk Balagtas. Abangan ng programang Gising Na sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Inabas ng mainit na kape at samahan kami sa inyong pag-almusal mga katribu. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatagong istorya 
sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Aaring nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ang inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribunal sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings mga katribo. Kaya naman, magsama-sama po tayo sa Gisina! In other news, Senator Nancy Binay and Christopher Lawrence Bongo on Monday said that they do not see the practicality of the One Health Pass anymore amid mounting complaints from travelers over the inconvenience of the screening system. For Binay, the OHP is becoming an inconvenience to many, especially overseas Filipino workers. She also asked the Department of Tourism and other government agencies to look into simplifying the processes like other countries as the tourism industry is starting to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. In a separate statement, Go said he agrees with the idea but emphasized that concerned agencies should still have control over the COVID-19 pandemic situation. The OHP is required for all arriving international travelers in accordance with the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases Res Resolution 135. It aims to prevent and minimize the entry of suspected or confirmed individuals with any emerging infectious diseases. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council urges the local government units concerned to prepare for the possible effects of the Mayon volcano's increasing unrest. Office of the Civil Defense Assistant Secretary Rafi Alejandro, who is also the NDRRMC spokesperson, said the Council has already heightened its monitoring of the Mayon activities. Alejandro noted that the need to revisit the Council's contingency plans and ensure that there are enough stockpiles of resources and supplies. An early assessment must be conducted while the volcano is still placed under alert level 2 status, he added. Alejandro said that there is an ongoing close monitoring of the Mayon's magma activities and the increase of its volcanic waves. Despite monitoring indicators of major activity in the volcano, Alejandro noted that it will take months before the Mayon's unrest status will be further elevated to alert level 3. Periodic explosions are expected while the Mayon is exhibiting increasing unrest. However, Alejandro said that there is no major activity expected to happen in the volcano. He further warned the public that entering the 6km permanent major zone, particularly in the southwest sector of the volcano, must be pro prohibited as an avalanche or a cracking crater is possible during the volcano's activity. That wraps up the stories tonight. Catch us again tomorrow only here at Daily Tribune's Facebook page. Again, this is Vernon Velasco and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. Good night and God bless us all. Catch the latest news on our website tribune.net.ph Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its vibrant community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber. We would like to thank the following. Araneta, Pag-ibig, SM Supermall, Veteran, Divina Law Offices, ICTSI, Xlog, Globe, Kia, PLDT, Cherry, Tanawan, Prime Homes, RLC, Pure Gold, Peralco, and SM Retail.
kahirapang mag-isa At sa gabi nahanap, hanap kita Sa mga 